Hello and welcome back to EVE Online with me, Mark from DadX, and here we are in our very shiny pod because we lost our ship in that last mission, remember, but we knew we were going to. It was that Corvette. Right, the next round of missions. This one wants us to take a relic analyzer, go and do exactly what we did with the data analyzer, basically find an object, scan it, bring back the data core within. The next military mission wants us to go and attack the Devout's hideout. In return, we shall get some cash and an implant, which will help with skill training. This one here wants us to go out and use an afterburner to fly quickly through a dangerous field effect, which will damage our ship. So that's fine. We can do that. We're not going to lose a ship doing that one. And the fourth mission in this round, and it's a good excuse to go to the shops, is this one. It wants us to just drop this cargo off. It's quite a long journey to the drop-off point, and it takes us within a couple of jumps of Amar, which is the local trade hub. So we're going to make a diversion there while we're heading that way anyway to go to the shop, because we need to get some equipment to fit our first proper ship. No disrespect to the Corvette. So we're going to accept all the missions, and when I accept the mission to drop the cargo, it says I can't because of the cargo capacity, because I'm in my pod. So let's get in that ship, shall we? We go to our ship hangar. Now we've been given a Punisher, an Executioner, an Adventure. We're going to take the Punisher first. We're going to fly this one out, drop off the cargo, complete that mission. On the way, we're going to stop at Amar and get some parts to fit the ship. So we're going to put the cargo in there so we don't forget that. And then we're just going to fit the ship here with the bits we've got that we have already or the bits that we need for this mission. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Right, so from what we've already got, I'm just going to fit the overdrive injector, which will make the ship a little bit faster. I'm going to fit in the expanded cargo hold, just in case we need to cram ourselves full of good stuff at the shops. We've got the afterburner on and the data analyzer we needed for the mission. And that's all we need. We're going to get everything else we need up there in the mart. It doesn't matter that we're going to fly there in a ship with no armor tank, no weapons, etc, etc. It will be fine. Okay, we're going to cancel that waypoint we set when we were looking at the mission, and we're going to set a waypoint to the system Amar there. And then we're going to go back in the mission, and if we set destination, it's going to set that as the first stop again. So we need to clear that. We'll set Amar as a destination again, and then set this as a waypoint. And then we'll add it onto the end of the journey. So we're going to go to Amar, and then we're going to go on to our final destination. Perfect. I'm going to open up the map screen centered on Depari, where we are, by right clicking on the name of the system up there, top left, and clicking open in map. So this is the route we're taking. So we're going to divert, instead of coming to our final destination, we're going to divert up here to Amar, and then come back down here. So it basically saves us doubling back. It's a little bit of a detour. There you go. Perfect. So... We're going to kill two birds with one stone, which seems to be the motto of this whole little tutorial guide of doing as much as you can at the same time. And I think in EVE, in general, that will save you so much time if you just have a little bit of a think before you leave and uh, see what else you might be able to do at the same time. You'll have much more time for having the fun. OK, here we are in Amar and let's look at fitting this ship now. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the elements of fitting a ship and some of the tools that we can use. I am going to do a dedicated video that goes into this in a little bit more detail. So here we have the fitting window. I'm just going to close some of these up. Start from the beginning. This box here, this restricts what is shown down here to the ships that you can actually fly skill-wise and the fits that you can use skill-wise. So if you look here, there's one fit here already. That's a community fit, which with my skills, there's one available. If I switch off the filter for only fits with that I can fly, there's a couple more fit. So you might want to click that button on and off just to see what else there is. And the only reason I can't fly those two other fits is because I can't fit an armor repairer yet. But we'll be fixing that quite soon anyway. So that there are fits here, the community fits. They're there from day one for you to have a look at. They're not there for all ships and they're not there for all applications, but they'll give you a general idea. The rest of the buttons along the top here are low slots, medium slots, high slots, rigs. Then we've got drones there. The next button will switch on and off fits just for your ship that you're actually currently in. So the Punisher in this case. And then as we said, that last button on the right is to filter the ships and the fits that you can actually fly with your current skills 
and of course the modules that you can currently fit will show down here in this section so right let's start with the guns that's always a good place to start so turrets and launchers it's filtered for what we can use which saves us plowing through lots of lists and we're going to look for now at the pulse lasers right here there are lots and lots of different ones there are basically three different types of pulse laser and five variants of each and uh, as you go down the list to summarize and generalize they will use more power and more cpu to fit on the ship they will take more power to run but they will provide more damage and more range that is a generalization as i say we'll look at this sort of stuff much more specifically in dedicated videos but we've got a lot to get through so how do you decide which one you might want to use we're going to open up the information screen and just have a little look at what that tells us so that gives us a brief description it's really the attributes we want to look at and if you read through this i won't go through this line by line but basically there are bonuses to range there are bonuses to damage they will vary in how much capacitor they use to run and they will also vary in how they fit in the ship in terms of power grid and cpu there's a tracking speed which is very important the higher the tracking speed or the higher the bonus then the better the gun will be at hitting fast small ships and there are lots of variations um price is also going to be a variation now if you actually look on the variance tab here you will see all of what is called the tech one variants at the top tech two in the middle and down at the bottom all of the faction variants the faction variants are very expensive they can be easier to fit and they can perform better but we won't talk about those too much now we're going to hit that compare button down at the bottom of that screen and i'll just have a little tidy up here so we can see what we want to see and i'm going to show you how useful a tool this is now as you can see down on that screen we have got all of those variants of the pulse laser and we can choose which ones we actually want to see so i'm going to control click on all of the faction ones and when i've highlighted those just right click and remove them because we don't need to know about that so it can be interesting to have a look but just to save time we'll concentrate on the ones that are at least within our reach now tech 2 isn't skill wise or probably cost wise but just for a comparison i'm going to leave it there now down here we can choose what we want to show data wise so for instance so the first one there meta level that starts at zero the numbers will get higher as we get into the faction gear but that is basically the game's way of grading modules is the meta level so what we're going to select down here let's have a look at let's we've got what we've got here reload speed may be relevant on some weapon systems it isn't on lasers fall off let's have a look that's the same for all of them so we don't need that for a comparison if we scroll down in terms of fitting cpu and power grid usage are going to be two key ones that you want to look at and as you can see they can vary so you can pick the ones that are the easiest to fit if that is your priority because the cpu and the power grid on your ship as we'll look at when we go into the details of ship fitting mechanics are one thing that can restrict what you get on the ship it basically stops you from day one from fitting the biggest best guns and the best tank and the best prop mod etc etc as you can see here the damage modifiers and the optimal ranges also vary so as the higher the meta number the higher the damage the better the optimal range and the higher the price now the meta zero module is more expensive than the meta one or the meta two or the meta three that is quite common although these prices can be a little bit inaccurate because they're based on average market prices on the buy and sell orders but to confirm you just right click and say view market details and here we are so we'll have a little look through just to confirm what the prices look like for each of those models now the meta free variant of a lot of modules and particularly guns is quite often especially early game the best place to be the meta four because they're the best module that doesn't require the skills for a tech two module are the most in demand both for pve and pvp so meta free modules are often the nicest balance when you've got a budget to consider once you can afford just to get the best then get the best but we're going to choose the meta free versions right here the reason i've gone for pulse lasers and the smaller pulse lasers is really because i don't want any pressure on the ship fit i want this to be quick and easy and simple so nobody has any issues everyone could that's watching this video should be able to fit this ship 
with the one exception that we will see as we go along because we're lacking a skill that I need. So we're going to go for the Anode Pulse Particle Stream 1 and we're going to get... Well, I'll buy three and then I'll buy one, but we need four. But there you go. I forget which ship we're in. The Executioner only fits three turret. The Punisher fits four. So there we're done. I'm just going to buy the odd one because I do remember while I'm here. At least I haven't sort of gone somewhere else and forgotten to do it. We've got the guns sorted out. If you're wondering what the difference between pulse lasers and beam lasers is, then again, without going into too much detail, the beam lasers are the longer range, lower DPS version. The pulse lasers, short range, higher DPS. That's the gist of it anyway. Right, let's get on with the show. What else are we going to need on this ship? We're going to simulate the fit, I think, first of all. And then we can mess about to our heart's content in the fitting screen. And I strongly encourage you all to do so. So, first of all, let's get those lasers fitted to the ship. We can just drag them over here until the slots are all filled up. Or you can right-click and say fit to active ship. There you go. So there's the four lasers. We'll press that button to group them. So they'll operate as a team. There are situations where you, you want your weapons split. But that's usually when you're in cruiser-sized ships, maybe destroyers. Anyway, here's the simulated fit. We're going to take off that data analyzer. Oh, we should have bought a relic analyzer. I came with the data analyzer. We'll take off the expanded cargo hold because we don't need that in general operations. We'll leave on the overdrive injector. As you can see, the velocity modifier there is 38.5%, so it is quite a nice healthy boost to speed. And that makes us harder to hit. You do have to remember when you're piloting to not let your speed mess up how well you're hitting the enemy. But anyway, over here we get a look at the mid-slot modules. And if we have a look down here, in propulsion we have two options. Afterburners and micro-warp drives. Micro-warp drives will make you go much faster. They use much more capacitor. Compact micro-warp drives are easier to fit on your ship. There is also a restrained micro warp drive. If something's called restrained, then it has a downside and the restrained version has less of the downside. In the case of micro warp drives, it's your signature radius bloom, which makes you easier to target and hit. We're going to go with an afterburner. It won't increase our speed as much, but it's much easier on the capacitor and we want lots of capacitor to shoot with. Now we've got the regular 1MN Afterburner 1, we've got the compact version and we've got an enduring version. Now the compact version is slightly easier to fit in terms of CPU and power grid and the enduring version of this and any enduring module is that it uses less capacitor to run. So if we have another quick look on the comparison screen, again I'm going to take off all of the faction modules and as you can see as I just tick on the main variables again there's the meta level Although in this instance, the two there are both meta level one. The tech two variants are always meta level five. So there's a little bit of a variation there, but the uh, principle is sound. But if we look at the fitting requirements, the power grid and the CPU, you will see exactly what I mean. Anyway, what are we gonna fit on this ship next? Oh, and while we got the ship simulated, you can simply drag the module up from that comparison screen. There you go, and it's in the simulated fit. So what we want in that middle slot, I think we're gonna go for a status weather fire. That will slow the rats down for us and make them easier to hit. And remember, we don't wanna be using those civilian modules we've been given in missions at all for general play. So there you go, we've got an enduring status weather fire fitted in there. Right, now we're going to go for the low slots, weapon upgrades. Now for the lasers, heat sinks are the weapon upgrades. We've got two choices, the heat sink one or the compact version. We're just going to use the heat sink one right now, that's more than enough for us. Each one of those will add 10% to the damage of our lasers. Although you do get a penalty for them stacking, so the second one's probably adding about 8%. Next low slot, we're going to go damage controls, and right here we've got a choice between a damage control 1 and a compact damage control. We're going to go for the regular version. That increases the resistances on the ship, which is a reduction in the damage that we take from the hits that hit us, to be brief. Again, I'm trying to get through a lot in this episode, for so excuse my brevity. I shall explain everything in future videos a lot more soundly. Next low slot, I think we're going to go for an armor repairer, but we haven't learnt the armor repair skill yet, so they won't even show up here in this list because of the filter. 
So we're going to turn off the filter, not that one, that's for the ship hole. Turn off that filter there for the skills that we have. So we can now see armor repairers. And I'm going to go for the small enduring armor repairer. And then we're going to get the skills sorted out so that we can actually use it. So we fitted the armor repairer, but now we've got a warning there that we can't use it because we haven't got the skills. So we can just click up on the icon in the corner there, buy the skill there. And then if we go to the training screen, we can get a few levels of that skill. Well, three levels of that skill to be exact racked up. You can see we're already learning level one from when we purchased it. So we're going to put in level two and level three of armor repairer. And for each level of the repair system skill that we have, we get a 5% reduction in the cycle duration of the repairer. So it's going to repair 5% quicker. Also go through the capacitor 5% quicker, but that's not going to be a problem for us at this stage. Not at all. So the estimated cost of the fit overall is just under a million. As you can see there, that includes obviously the cost of the ship itself which is a very good value and as I say this will be a nice little performer for us. The, it may cost a little bit more when you actually go to buy it because those prices again are based on averages. So I'm just going to go through, buy these bits and pieces individually, just make sure it's in the station that we're docked in here at the Amar Trade Hub. You do get some warnings. On low price items you're more likely to get the warning about it being overpriced. That again is because there'll be some very very low buy order prices but if you get that warning just double check that it you know the one that you've clicked on isn't a rip-off price again there's the warning there for the afterburner but we're not too worried about that you can use that buy all button that flashed up when i was looking at the value of the ship but that will buy everything including the hole which obviously we, we don't need to do and you do need to be a little bit cautious when you do buy that way that everything's in the station where you are and everything is at a reasonable price you can get some very inflated prices sucked into those transactions so nice and safely only takes a couple of minutes and obviously for you guys the more time you spend looking and using stuff in the game the more used to it you're going to get so last but by no means least we're going to buy that armor repairer Everything now will appear in the item hanger here in the station. We don't need to buy the overdrive injector. We've already got one. Thank you very much. So all we need to do now is fit the stuff to the ship. So we need to exit the simulation. And we just need to make sure we've got nothing in the way of what we need to fit. So we're going to take off the basic afterburner. Put on the enduring afterburner. We'll put on the damage control and the two heat sinks. Put on the armor repairer. No, we won't because there's no free slot for it. What have I forgotten? Let's have a look. Oh, of course, we've got the expanded cargo hold. In fact, we'll leave that there for now just to make sure we can uh, get plenty of stuff back to our little base with us. I am going to go on and buy some other bits and pieces for some other fits, but I'll show you those as we're actually putting them onto the ships just to not confuse you too much completely. We just need a bit of ammo for the lasers now. There are so many types of ammo here. The stuff at the top here is Tech 1. It never runs out. There are lots of variations here for the range, for the tracking, for the damage multiplier, and for the capacitor use. There can be quite a big reduction. Flick through those yourselves, guys. For now, I'm going to go for multi-frequency, which is a close-range high DPS ammo, and standard crystals, which has no range or damage multiplier, but does have a reduced capacitor usage. So we can vary between the two and there's also an instant reload so as you if you're firing your guns and you want to change ammo you just switch your lasers off and you can change the laser crystals instantly no other weapon type has that instant reload facility if we open up our item hanger we're going to drag the ammo into the fitting screen so there you go there's the multi-frequency ammo and as you can see that's given us a dps of just under 75 we've got an optimal range of about 2400 meters and a fall off of 5100 meters if we take that ammo out and switch it for the standard ammo you'll see the dps has fallen to about 46 but our optimal range is now up to 5100 meters and our maximum range and the fall off range is up to 8100 meters so that's how that works our punisher our very first combat ship is now fully fit and ready for action 
I've skipped ahead to us handing in the mission. There's the cargo. We've just got to head back over to Depari and we can get on with the rest of the missions that we picked up. And by that time, we'll have trained the skill to fit the and use the armor repairer. So it'll all work out fine. And we'll be looking at those missions in the next episode. I'm heading that way right now, as you can see. But I hope you found this useful, guys. There is so much to ship fitting that I could talk about it for hours. This is a very brief summary just to give you some of the basic concepts and give you one ship to get going in. It's going to vary from race to race. Anyway, leave us a like if you've liked it. Any comments, suggestions or questions are always welcome. Subscribe if you haven't already, but for now, take care of yourselves and each other. Remember, even is believing. Fly brave and goodbye.